a female 21 year old college student, but this story occurred two years ago on Black Friday. I worked at a major retail store and it was actually Thanksgiving night because we opened early for Black Friday. I was working a shift from 6 p.m. to midnight. I was mainly a cashier, but I also trained to work in electronics as well as fill in at manager when people went on breaks. When we opened, it was immediately very busy and the store was packed. It was my second time working a Black Friday, so I knew what to expect, but it was still pretty crazy. I spent most of the night as a cashier, bringing up customer after customer. When my shift was finally almost over at about 11 p.m., the store was still very busy and the manager for our area needed to take a break, so I filled in during that time. I basically just overlooked the lanes and usually didn't have to do a whole lot, so it was pretty easy. About 10 minutes into that, I saw a middle-aged man check out and buy a relatively large TV. After he checked out, he walked over to me and asked if I could help him. I asked him what I could do for him, and he then told me that he needed help getting the TV into his car. I said sure, and I followed him out of the store. He led me to his car, which was parked all the way at the end of the parking lot, that still had quite a few cars in it. We arrived at his car and he said he would open up the back. He had a pretty large SUV and when I saw it I was relieved because I was afraid he would be driving a tiny car where the TV wouldn't fit in it. He went towards the front of the car and then I heard him drop his keys on the ground. He apologized to me and asked if he could borrow the flashlight on my phone to find his keys. I turned my phone to flashlight mode and then handed it to him. He then walked back over to the front of his car, picked up his keys, and unlocked it. He said it was open and I could go ahead and open the back, and then he would come around to help me. I opened it up and saw that he already had all of the seats removed in the back, so that would make the TV fit much better. He came over to the other side of the car across from me and lifted the TV with me out of the shopping cart and into the back of his car. Once it was in his car, he asked me if I could slide it all the way forward for him because he had a bad back. To do so, I had to get into the back of his car completely and push the TV forward. But as soon as my whole body was in the car, he slammed the trunk closed behind me. <laughs> it really took me by surprise and nearly gave me a heart attack. I turned around to see the man sort of smiling through the window. I figured it must have been a joke but then I heard the trunk make the locking sound and saw the man start to walk over to the driver's door. He had one of those divider things so I couldn't reach him in the front of the car. He then got in and started the engine. When he did, I tried the door anyways, but of course it was locked. I asked the man to let me out, but he ignored me completely and started slowly driving away. I looked around desperately to see if anybody had seen what had happened but this area of the parking lot was poorly lit and I couldn't see any people in the immediate area. I reached for my cell phone to call for help, but then I remembered that the man still had it. Thankfully, I still had my store walkie-talkie that we used to communicate throughout the store. I didn't know if it would still work at this long of a range, but I knew I had to try. The only problem was it made a really loud beeping noise when you spoke on it, so I turned the volume all the way down to mute so that the man wouldn't hear me and I pushed down the button to speak. I whispered that I was in trouble and I was in the back of a gray SUV. I couldn't listen back for a response because the walkie was very loud and the man surely would have heard it, so I had to mute it after I spoke. I could only hope that somebody in the store heard me and took me seriously. The man, meanwhile, just kept driving the car and ignoring me the whole time, aside from telling me once that if I did anything crazy or stupid, something bad would happen to me. I just sat in the back of the car as far away from the man as I could and wondered what he was planning to do. We drove down a pretty busy road for a while, probably 10 to 15 minutes, and then turned off to a more quieter one. I was beginning to lose hope when out of nowhere I saw flashing lights behind us. I heard the man curse and he pulled to the side of the road. I was hoping the police would pull over as well, and sure enough they did. That was one of the best feelings of my life. The man was immediately arrested and I was let out of the truck. My call on the walkie had in fact worked and one of the store workers had called the police. I was given the next two weeks off from work after the incident and I haven't worked a Black Friday since.
It's a tradition for me to go Black Friday shopping every year with my best friend. We usually start at night on Thanksgiving and go for hours, sometimes all night. A few years back, we had several stores in mind that we wanted to go to. The first of which was a very large and popular store. We arrived shortly before they opened and saw a pretty decent sized line in front of the doors with tons of people waiting to get inside. When the store finally opened, people ran inside and packed the place. We walked inside and saw people literally everywhere like a giant mob was running around the store. The most people were in the electronics section, but there were literally people everywhere. It was quite the sight to see. The store was getting pretty rowdy too. We witnessed two people get into an argument as well as two other people shouting random things. We even saw a guy who was wearing a clown mask. All of that in the span of about 10 minutes. We went to go look at the things that we wanted, which were new Fitbits that were on sale. As we were looking at the Fitbits, we saw the guy in the clown mask walk over to us about 10 feet away and just stare at us. There were a lot of people between us, but we could see that he was directly looking at us, and if we moved a little bit, his head would move a little bit as well. We decided to get the Fitbits and then walk to another part of the electronics, and when we did, we noticed that the clown man seemed to be following us. He was wearing normal clothes, a sweatshirt and jeans, but the mask was one of the creepier ones that I had seen. We just ignored him the whole time and kept shopping, but he was starting to bother us with how obvious he was being that he was following us. My friend suggested that we go to the complete opposite end of the store, and so we did. The clown man followed us the whole way there too. It got really annoying, so I went up to him and asked him to stop following us. But when I did, he didn't seem to care at all. In fact, when I stepped closer towards him, he jumped away as if I was dangerous or something. By this point, we were ready to be done with that store and head to another one. We were kind of afraid that the clown mask guy would follow us out of the store, but figured he probably wouldn't. We checked out, which took us a while because of the long lines, and as we waited, the clown man stood at the end of the checkouts just staring at us. The store was so busy that none of the workers seemed to really notice or care. After all, there had been a near fight with some other people. Finally, when we were done checking out, we walked to the exits. When we got out the front door, the clown guy followed us right out. We decided to just keep ignoring him and walk to our car. He followed us all the way there, and when we arrived at the car, he stood about 20 feet back. Then, an SUV pulled up to the clown man, and he got into the back seat. We were a little bit confused, but overall relieved to see him get into a car. That is, until we looked into the windows of the car he got into, and saw at least three other people, all wearing different creepy clown masks, including the driver. We got into our vehicle as fast as we could and started it. Their SUV just sat in the middle of the parking lot lane with the engine running. As soon as we left, they followed. They followed us extremely close as we tried to leave the parking lot. Traffic was pretty busy because of Black Friday, and we knew we would have to try to lose them. They followed us right out of the parking lot. They followed us right out of the parking lot and down the road. We went towards another road that went we went towards another road that led to more stores including a mall. We had to stop at a four-way stop sign that had lines of cars at each direction. When it was our turn to go, we knew this was good because the clown would have to wait for their turn. But instead of waiting, they drove directly behind us and nearly caused an accident with multiple cars honking at them as they sped through the intersection. This really creeped us out to see the level of dedication they were taking just to follow us. But shortly after the both of us crossed the intersection, we heard a siren and saw flashing lights behind us. Luckily for us, a cop had been one of the cars in line at the intersection. We pulled over to the side of the road, but the clowns did not and sped by us as well as the cops. We watched as the clowns drove forward for a good 10 to 15 seconds before finally pulling over and getting stopped by the police. We took this opportunity to turn around and drive the complete opposite direction. We didn't see those clowns again for the rest of the night. I am the owner and manager of a local outdoor supplies store. 
Every year, like most stores, we get very busy around the holidays, and Black Friday is the busiest day of the year for us. So every year, we hire a few seasonal employees to work the last couple of months. Last year in particular, I really needed to hire some people fast, so I hired two people, a woman named Amber and a guy named Alan. They were both pretty good workers. Alan didn't talk much at all, however, and he always seemed a little bit strange, but as long as he did his job, I really didn't care. When Black Friday came, obviously, I needed everybody who worked at the store to be working that day. We opened at 6 a.m., and while we didn't get the same rush that Target or Walmart might get, we still got quite a few customers on that day. The first hours went by very quickly because of how busy we all were. I was doing a little bit of everything, being the owner and manager, and I had somebody at both registers which had long lines the entire time. We were making tons of sales, which meant lots of money, so I was pretty happy. At about 2 p.m., things were still very busy, and I needed to go to the back room of the store to get some items which had recently sold out. Our back room was actually on the left of the store, and I walked over to it and went inside. As soon as I got inside, I heard movements coming from the corner of it as if somebody else was in there. I had just seen most of my workers, so I didn't think any of them would be in there. It was fairly dark, and I walked a little bit farther to where the noise was coming from. Then I saw four large men, all dressed in black as well as ski masks, with multiple boxes in their hands. They had the door leading out to the dumpster behind the store open, and I quickly realized that we were being robbed. As soon as they saw me, one of them yelled at me not to move. I was probably about ten feet away from them, and I didn't know if I would be able to outrun them. Before I could really think about what to do, one of them walked over quickly to me and put his hand on my arm and held me there. I could only watch as they packed the boxes into the car behind the store and took about two more trips worth of things. They really knew what to take because they were stealing some of the most valuable things that we had in the store and seemed to know exactly where they were. I couldn't believe this was happening. It was really unbelievable for me. I wish I had some type of silent alarm that I could have used, but we weren't a very high-tech store. Then I heard the door to the back room open coming from the store. When I looked, Alan walked through the door and into the back room. He looked surprised to see what was going on. I was hoping he would run and turn around and call the police. But instead, he stopped in place and looked at me and then walked closer. I was expecting the men to grab him as they did to me. But instead, he walked with the men and out to the back door. They made me go to the back door as well. Then Alan, along with the four men, all got into the truck parked behind the store and drove away. I was stunned at what I had just seen. Apparently Alan was in on the job. It was a relief that they didn't hurt me, and as soon as they left, I called the police. They arrived shortly after and said they would look for the truck. I gave them all of Alan's information that I knew as well. When we looked over the security footage, though, all of the cameras had been shut off. I'm guessing by Alan. None of the men have ever been caught.